In this lab, we will explore the dynamics between identity and network file sharing when we're dealing with Centrify and protocols such as NFS. Today we'll focus on NFS. In a later post, we'll talk about Samba. All of this is going to be performed from client one using, using Jesse's account, the Unix administrator. In the post, we talked about how um, network file systems relate to identity. And the basic function is that uh, the network file protocol needs to know who is actually the user so they can assign um, ownerships to files and folders or determine if you can have access to a file or not and things of that nature. And, and in the case of NFS, it relies in the get passport UID function to get the, that, and, and that is an NSS function. But in, in the middle of a Centrify implementation, it's possible that non-Centrified systems may be hosting files and folders, and you want to access them from a Centrified system. So in this case, we have um, a system that knows who I am, um, or has an information of who I am versus a system that may not know who I am or has a different type of information. The best way to take a look at this is with an example. I have on join my Solaris system, happens to be an NFS server, and I'm going to go ahead and try and uh, mount uh, um, a drive, uh, an NFS drive from my CentOS machine. Notice that um, I'm joined to Active Directory from my CentOS machine, and um, if I do an AD query user, you will see that my user accounts have uh, uh, that UID generated from SID. Uh, my user Jesse has this long UID. If I want to go ahead and, and uh, mount it, so let's go ahead and elevate these you do, and it will be mount. Uh, so one. I'm going to mount that, mount that into the SN, um, mount remote folder. And uh, that's effectively mounted. So if I want to verify, it will be mount. And there it is, it's mounted. So let's go to that folder. Notice that there's no files there. So in my particular case, the way I have configured my NFS, and it's, it's a very simple configuration, I basically allow um, the UID and GID information to be provided with the remote procedure call. So I'm not doing any transformation or um, uh, any manipulations through the share. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, create a file. And that's listed right here. Notice that if I list it, because my system knows who I am, knows my UID, it's able to know, oh, I know that this long UID is Jesse. So, um, you know, that's my long UID right there. So let's do, maybe we can do some changes. And um, uh, let's do a, let's see if I can do this change. there you go I have changed the actual permissions so nobody else can touch the file uh, so let's reproduce the problem and and let's go to my center uh, to my uh, Solaris machine and uh, he my user Jesse happens to have a local account in that machine And uh, just to start right away, look at the UID. The UID is 101. So I am known as Jesse Matthews, J. Matthews in the system, but my UID is 101. Uh, guess what? If I go to my share, And here you can see that uh, my system doesn't know who that long UID is, therefore is, in, is unable to translate the name. And even if I want to take a look at the file in this case, because I am 
UID 101 and I want to I'm not gonna uh, have the rights to do that so at this point I probably have to um, you know elevate to root and do a, a challenge and uh, you know get ownership of the file this is very inefficient uh, the quickest way to solve this problem is to join this computer to the domain and uh, with Centrify and that will solve the issue right away so I could do something like this um, let's go ahead and join this machine uh, we could um, let's do a self-service join so let's uh, prepare this computer and um, or we could even do a direct join that's not a problem so um, let's do su actually you know what let's do a sub service join so um, we're gonna uh, prepare the computer for the join uh, we're gonna create a new object um, so that will be sol1 and let's change that to our container Unix servers hopefully it doesn't exist there you go that's the SPNs and this is okay so I'm gonna so that's that's computer this computer is ready for an AD join now so all I need to do is um, elevate here and uh, do an AD join minus s so the computer has been joined and uh, it's always a good idea to restart a computer when you um, when you do a, a, an NSS change for example the 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 NFS um, program has been running and it uh, uses NSS the NSS switch files so uh, we could do a, a, a restart Now that our system has restarted, let's go ahead and test that. So we're going to sign in as Jesse. In this case, look at the prompt. I'm getting the AD password prompt, mean, meaning that this is the AD user in the local in the, in, in the machine, not the local user. This was a really good cue because um, I, I my passwords happen to be different. So um, now I put the right password in. Notice that it's saying, hey, there's a conflicting person here. So that's why we have the ADRM local utility. But the most important thing for me right now is to uh, see if I can just go and, and, and see my file. So let's go. Um, So in here, that's the number. Um, if I do um, uh, just a regular LS, you will see that J. Matthews actually now owns the file, right? And if I want to, I won't be able to, the file doesn't have anything, but if I cap the file, I don't get the error. So now the system, uh, the, the system actually knows exactly uh, what we're looking for because uh, they belongs to the same realm and is able to resolve the number the name uh, correctly